Today we're reviewing a flashlight. You've got a nice beam of light, you've got a flashing beam of light, and you've got a faster flashing beam of light. But here's the secret. You also have a laser. Why would you need a laser on a flashlight? Because this is not just a flashlight. This thing is a pepper ball launcher. Yeah, self-defense disguised as the flashlight. Well, not really even disguised because it is a flashlight. And that makes this a pretty versatile and handy unit for anyone. Now, a lot of folks who are looking at self-defense pepper guns like this will look at pepper spray, which is limited range and the wind can blow it away or blow it right back at you. So that's one of the concerns with that. Then there are the pepper guns that look like guns. Now, Pepper Ball makes this one too. It's called the TCP. Haven't tried it out yet, but if somebody pulls this on me and I might think he has a real gun. A lot of people are concerned about that. Plus, it's probably illegal in a lot of venues. In fact, any kind of a Pepper Ball launcher is illegal in some venues. I can't believe that, but it's true. Even this little simple one shot they've got a mini one you could stick in your pocket or purse or, but i guess that's even illegal in some jurisdictions crazy but where they are illegal this one strikes me as a great option because of its versatility who wouldn't want to leave an office building into a dark parking lot with a flashlight so you're looking where you're going the flashlight's an advantage and you see a shady looking character over there in the corner well you can get ready you could put on the laser. That might, that might alone dissuade him from doing anything. But if you need to, you can fire the trigger. Now, I don't have this launched or loaded. I have not used it yet. Just want to demonstrate the basics. And then we're going to go out and see how fast these balls move over a chronograph, how accurate it is. I've got some question about the accuracy given where the trigger is. It's not like a handgun. But boy, that red, red laser should put you right on target. You don't have to come up and, and aim over any sights, so it could work pretty well in any position. Uh, you might shoot it like this, um, two-handed. Got a lot of options. We're going to explore them all. Now, the flashlight unit and the laser sight run off of three AAA batteries right back in here. Didn't come with any batteries, but I put them in, and it immediately worked. So that runs all the lights, but it's not required to run the pepper gun. The pepper ball gun is run with the usual CO2, this little 8-gram CO2 cartridge. I don't know how many balls it will shoot. I do know that the uh, reservoir only holds three. So I suspect it, it's, gonna hold, it's going to shoot three at top speed, maybe five or six. But once you puncture it, you're probably going to run out of air eventually. They all leak once you get them punctured. The cool thing is this supposedly doesn't puncture until you press it trigger for the first time. I don't know if that launches a ball or if it just punctures it first. We'll find out when we go outside. So you can load up three, put in a cylinder, leave it in, and when you need it, it should be fresh because it hasn't been punctured yet. So other than that, uh, you know, it's the, a size issue. It's a fairly bulky flashlight for flashlights these days, but fits nicely in my wife's purse. So she could carry it like that and have it ready to go. And of course, you're using it as a flashlight. You can have it out. Nobody's going to suspect anything. If you have a computer bag, you might want to store it in there. Put it in the glove box of your car, whatever. Got a lot of options for easy carry. Weighs about a pound and a quarter, maybe 20 ounces, 22 ounces at the most. So it's fairly substantial, but not onerously heavy. And I think we're ready to go outside and give it a test drive. This could be a unit I'd like my wife and my daughters to carry. And I might even want one myself. Okay, we're out on the shooting range to see how the Pepperball Mobile works. Now, I noticed that the directions seem to be for an older model. They must have upgraded some things in this. So the directions aren't quite accurate. Um, I called the company to find out if I was right or wrong on this stuff. And they said, yes, yes, we have a new manual out. And here's the uh, online version of it. And that fixed everything. So if you do happen to pick one up that has that little bit of a confusion, this one, for instance, says that it you shouldn't shoot more than five balls or load more than five balls into it, and it only holds three. So I think it was from a larger, older unit. 
And at any rate, once I got the understanding properly, I then follow their advice on how to load this thing safely and properly. So first thing you do is not put pepper balls inside of that. <laughs> I'm going to open it up just to show you this is where they would go, but you don't want them in there while you're putting the gas in just in case, just to be safe. So remove that and then you screw out the plunger for the CO2 cartridge. That's going to drop inside and the spring is going to push it, but you don't want it to be punctured when you first put it in. So nipple down first. Here's the tricky part. There's a little catch inside of there that holds that spring pressure back and it makes it difficult to line up the threads just right. So you have to take your time and watch it. And now it's getting tighter and tighter as that spring compresses. This is something they didn't talk about in the manual at all. So I actually wasted the gas out of a couple of canisters not doing this properly. So I don't think this thing has to be tightened all the way down. I've got a bit of a gap in there right now, and it feels plenty tight. So the unit is now ready to go after I fire it. And as you can see right here, fire safe. It shouldn't fire while it's on safe, and it is not firing. I imagine if I push it to fire, I will not puncture the CO2 cylinder. But when I press the trigger, I will. That's what we're gonna find out next. So inert pepper balls are what I will put in. These are the blue and white ones. These are 67 caliber. I measured it, 0.67. So let's put three in. And from here on out, point this thing in a safe direction. Preferably not at you or me. This goes in real easily. So now you're loaded and this is how you would carry the pepper ball flashlight, this mobile, in your car, your purse, or in your hand. So as you're walking at night in a suspicious area, you could have your flashlight on and probably not blinking like that. And then if you needed to use the unit, throw that safety switch to fire and press the trigger. So <laughs> I think I'll watch it right about there. <laughs> yeah, it's a little bit hard trigger, but I, I easily operated, even in your excitement, I'm pretty sure. So you should get three blasts out of that thing and have enough gas for a couple, three more. But here's the thing. Once you've punctured it, it is slowly going to leak out. So don't think you can take one shot and then a week later <laughs> use it again. I, it'll probably get, be gone in a few hours to maybe a day or two. So figure once you fired it, you may as well do some practice shooting until you've used the cylinder up and then reload it unpunctured for your next use. So I've got a little target down here, classic man-sized target for self-defense practice, and we'll shoot a ball at that. Let's move that camera so we can see it now. Okay, here's our first problem. In the daylight, that laser beam is not going to show up on the target. So I put it on fire and I aim it and I cannot see it. But what are your chances you're going to use this in daylight? Generally, it's gonna be low light to dark. So I don't know how big of an issue that is. Also, you can generally just point it once the assailant is within about that 20 feet distance and you probably wanna use this. I think you can just point it in the general direction at score. That's what I'm gonna to have to do right now. Let's see how well I do it. Whoa, shot way over the top of him. That is not good. Covey, you're not gonna retrieve that one, are you? Shot off to the side. So daylight, you're going to have to do some practice with this to be able to hit anything because that laser light just it doesn't show. So now we need to load up some more pepper balls. We've shot three. I've got my flashlight on. I don't need that. Let me just turn that off. Now I want to put in some, some fresh ammunition. So we'll put three more in and see how much more we can get out of that CO2 cartridge. I would imagine we could get three more good shots, but it sounded like a lot of gas going into that shot. That was pretty hard. Covey, I hope I'm not so bad that I shoot you now. This should work. Oh, off to the side again. This is not easy. There we go. 
Wow, still plenty of force in that for three more pellets. Let's see what we can do. I'm gonna put it on safe again. As you can see, it's gonna take a little practice to get this unit and you functioning well together. So be prepared to buy some of these inert powder balls and do your practicing. Let's do three more and see what we can get out of this cylinder. Yeah, just strikes me as it's definitely a nocturnal tool. I'm gonna keep it down here at my side, just like this. It's a little uncomfortable pulling that, pushing that trigger. Now that one was a little low, that was on target. I can hear gas escaping, but no shot. So we're, yeah, we're down. So what did we get, six? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about eight. But again, that's not gonna do you any good. You get your three shots at your assailant and then you don't have time to reload it unless you've incapacitated him and wanna hang around, but I would shoot and run. <laughs> so uh, now we have to take the cylinder out and put a new one in to prepare for the next event. And let's hope we don't have any events. But if you're looking for a good nocturnal defense, I think this one's a great option. I just love that flashlight idea. Um, I don't think I would hire it to do my day work, but here are the live capsules, and that obviously they're red, so you know you're, you're loaded with the dangerous stuff. And I don't know, I suppose we could reload this and shoot one of these and just go sniff it. Capsicum is uh, the pepper that's in there. It is in a powder form, not a liquid. Um, and there are some questions about whether it will break on soft materials. Well, what we did is put plywood behind it so we had something hard to break the ball. But a lot of people will say, well, that's the issue. You're not shooting at plywood, you're shooting at people, soft, potentially soft targets. Plus they're gonna have clothing on. So we did put on this hoodie. <laughs> You've gotta have a hoodie if you're doing a film about a bad guy, right? They are all wearing hoodies. So we've got your fleece lined, fairly thick hoodie here. Uh, but it's got that hard backing on it. But as you can see, it certainly worked. And if that were the capsicum, that would have powdered, floated in the air and gotten into the eyes and nose, and that's what incapacitates the attacker. And they claim that stuff really, really works. But my wife says, we're ready to prove it. We need to have a human target. And she volunteered me. <laughs> I'm not sure I'm going to go for this, but she's still working on me. So maybe tonight I'll put on a lots of protective clothing <laughs> to protect me from the 300, 400 foot per second whack of that ball. And uh, we'll have Betsy thump me and we'll see if it explodes on some soft clothing. Because I promise you, if I'm in here, it's going to have a lot of soft clothing. <laughs> They're claiming a velocity of 300 feet per second. I have a chronograph here, so we'll shoot over that and just see how close we come to that reading. This is a fresh tube of CO2, so it should be about as powerful as it's going to get. I push it from safe to fire. I get across. Got to remember my launch tube is in the middle. There's my target. Shot way high again. 179 feet per second. Let's try another one. Boy, it is really difficult to aim this with no sight. Shot over the top again, 262. Now that kind of surprises me. You'd think the first shot you'd have full power. Let's see what this last one does. Now there's a good burst, 422. So it's not consistent, but it can really crank out the velocity. 422, come and read that one. That's pretty impressive. Now let's check some more velocities here. I've shot four already off of this CO2 cartridge. So let's just see what we get for some more velocities <laughs> and see if I can hit that target. I, I tend to keep this thing aimed too high. Oop, gotta put it on fire. You've gotta practice with these things, get comfortable. You can't just buy one and expect you're gonna be use it properly. Oh, dead center, like it. 202, uh, 254, I'm hitting it every time now, 247. So the velocity staying, staying fairly consistent in that mid 200 range. Let's try, well, I don't have another 
ball. I'm going to go get some. Let's just see what kind of air we get out of this thing for a shot. Yep. Yep, we got three more shots, but I don't know how fast they would have been going. Petered out fairly quickly. So I think you can count on a good six shots, but once again, it doesn't really matter because your assailants either they're gone or you're gone. <laughs> it works or it doesn't. And then you load up. It's essentially a three-shot operation. Well, as those three shots showed you, sometimes the ball bounces off. So having that soft target is a concern with these balls. Now, these are practice balls. I would assume they are the same container as the live red ones with the active ingredient. These may break a little more easily. I don't know. We're going to have to shoot some of them, I suppose. And, uh, <laughs> well, we really need to do that anyway. I just don't want to be downwind of it, which we are right now. So we may have to change our setting. But I think we're going to come back in low light this evening so we can show the effect of that laser for sighting. Because that seems to me the number one sticking point right now. Unless you train a lot. I got pretty good at hitting the target after I played around with this and uh, learned how to tip it up. I was more tip it down, I guess, in the nose like this. But, yeah, definite concern on the soft clothing. We'll do a little more research tonight. All right, let's live fire here. We're loading up the pepper. And let's see how effectively they break if there's any difference. Now, I really want to be careful with this thing. Keep it on safe. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, oh, boy, just the least little whiff of that up your nose. Uh, holy mac. Oh, I got a little piece of my eye, too. I'm going to get up into this mess. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. My nose is plugging up. Yeah. That was after the wind had blown everything away and it was just sitting there. I can see where this stuff would really work if it explodes. <clears throat> I want to check the video and see if all of those exploded. It looked like maybe the one, the second one, hit a soft spot and didn't. Not real sure on it, but I am getting a lot better with my aim, so definitely have to practice with this thing. But I can see where it would be pretty effective. Well, after my experience earlier today with uh, the Pepper Ball Mobile, I think that's the device for low light nighttime but in the daytime without your ability to really sight that i think I, my option is going to be this one the tcp is a classic handgun shape and it shoots like a handgun and it has open sights on it like a handgun and it should be a lot more accurate so the other benefit of this is it holds six in the grip so you can get six shots off about as fast as you can pull the trigger let's see what the uh, tcp does all right. <laughs> yeah. That's so easy to aim. It's just so natural for anyone who's shot with a pistol. But of course, in a lot of places, you can't have something that looks like a handgun. And a lot of people say, I am not going to pull out a uh, self-defense pepper gun that looks like a gun and could get me into more trouble. There's a philosophy both ways on that one, but you'll have to make up your own mind. The nice thing is we've got options. So uh, we're going to wait now for the uh, light to get even lower and see how effectively the mobile device works with the laser. And then we'll shoot some with that. But boy, if you're uh, anticipating needing to stop some trouble in broad daylight, I think you might want to look real hard at this one. All right, uh, the sun has set, so it's still plenty bright out. But let's put that... I don't know, can you see it? I can very plainly see that red dot on that jacket. No problem. I got closer so we could get me in and see that tiny little dot. I'm not sure if the camera is picking it up or not, but can you guys see it if I do this, if I aim it at you? So at any rate, the laser is on and I'm seeing my target. Now I'm gonna back up if we can still see that light on there. Here's the laser, I can just see it beautifully with my naked eye and as I say it's still plenty bright out so 
yeah, this will work in the evening hours quite nicely. All right, here goes the real red pellet in low light on the target. Okay, it's shooting to the right. And we can adjust that. They have adjustments on this, so you can uh, use a little Allen tool that they said with it and turn it so that your hips are right where the light is. But I think we've pretty much proved how this works and that it works. <coughs> and man, that stuff is getting to me. <coughs> I added a lot of paper right in there. I hope she hits it. So as you can see, this was shooting to the right. And here is we were, would make the adjustments with the little Allen wrench right in those two holes. You get vertical and windage. So we could adjust so that the hits were striking right where the laser is pointing and we should be in business. Um, I'm not going to go through the trouble of doing that now <clears throat> because I'm kind of choked up <laughs> from wearing that jacket with all that stuff on it, my gosh. <clears throat> but it looks like a pretty effective tool with a lot of practice, you really do need to practice with this. Sadly, the world we live in is getting a little more dangerous all the time. It's incumbent upon all of us to be ready to protect ourselves. And where we can't use the tool of our choice, you might be able to get by with something like this. Now, if a diurnal setting where you can see your sights, I think this little pistol style TCP is a great option. But at night, when you can't see your sights, you've got the laser on the pepper ball mobile, and that, I think, will really help you put those pepper balls on target. Three in here, six in here, take your choice. This is Ron Spomer urging everyone to hunt honest and defend yourself.